August the 5th, 6.32 a.m. You're looking at a CZ457 with a Lilja HM2 barrel on it. For the first focal plane scope. You see that trigger stick there? A short Primus trigger stick. <clears throat> you know, there's a little discussion going on, you know. And everybody has their opinion. 22 long rifle versus 17 HM2 on squirrels. Okay, I put a long thread over there on Rimfire Central with video. All right, now I didn't have a trigger cam on my gun. I got one now though, that I'm gonna use. But I did use a camera and I zoomed a lot of squirrels, boys, with leaves off. And quite a few with leaves on before I shot them. I called off ranges before or after the, sh on a lot of the shots using a 17 HM2. <clears throat> I was predominantly aiming at heads. Okay. I was using either trees, but most of the time the old trigger stick. I don't need a damn bench rest to shoot squirrels at 90, 100 yards in the head with that gun right there in the woods. Okay. I don't need it. I ain't never took one to the woods. I show the trigger stick a lot of times in the video. You can see it. You can see me zoom in that camera and calling even the mag on the camera to show you how far that damn squirrel is. Some of the squirrels you can see flopping when I pick the camera up, turn it back on, you can see the squirrel up flopping. And the next thing you know, I'm picking the squirrel up showing you where he's hit. That's why I did this. Okay, now let's talk a little bit more about this HM2. It makes a different sound than a 22 long rifle unsuppressed. Alright. Squirrels are actually, I find them less afraid of the pop of this gun than a 22 long rifle high velocity. Okay. I will also say this, and you all get a kick out of this, when it's overcast, the squirrels don't seem to be as afraid of this gun. My theory is, is they think it's thundering, like it's coming up a cloud. The squirrels aren't, they're not afraid of thunder. A lot of times, believe it or not, I've seen this in the woods. Before a storm moves in, I've been in the woods several, several mornings. When a storm moves in, a squirrel may go to eating faster. Because he thinks it's coming up a cloud that's going to start pouring the rain. He'll run the hole or something. But I don't know. That's just a theory of the sharpshooters after spending a damn lot of hours, years, months in the woods. Now, here's some common sense we'll talk about. <clears throat> Could I make a lot of the shots I've made with this gun with a 22 long rifle, a very good shooting long rifle, using the same trigger stick, aiming at heads, knowing the exact distance and even the drop to hold with a 22 long rifle? The answer is no. Why is that? Because the damn bullet in the barrel is in the barrel twice as long. I can be sloppier with this gun. That makes sense? So the bullet is in the barrel less. So any, you know, any bad trigger management, you know, moving the gun on the shot is going to have what? Less of an effect on the shot. So yeah, you're out in the wild and you're using a trigger stick, the terrain is uneven, etc., etc. And you're shooting angled shots. <clears throat> this gun shoots flatter. Squirrels in the when you get used to using in leaves off. Now this is really in particular. This gun is superior with leaves off. 17 HM2 to 22 long rifle. 
it shoots flatter. 70 yard shots, you put the crosshair, the dot net scope on that head, if there's no wind, you got a pretty good chance of killing him. Now, what about shots that are not ideal? 22 long rifle comes up way short, at even a, a, at a 70 yard distance, 60 yards, way short. Remember, the 22 long rifle is slowing down too. Its bullet deformation will decrease. Well, this one here will too. But that VMAX bullet and that VNT bullet are very destructive. Gut shot gray squirrels with an HM2, <clears throat> they'll probably be there for you to either A, step on their head, shoot them again, or pick them up and put them in your bag because they're dead. Gut shot squirrel at 60, 70 yards with a long, 22 long rifle hollow point. Odds are far greater that it will either crawl off or go in a hole. I got a lot of years in the woods with a 22 long rifle too. I've got to see them both. Okay, now. There are situations, why, why is this gun with leaves off where I live, why is it superior? Number one, I don't have to go on some of these steeper croppings. There's squirrels in those areas. And I can't slip on steeper terrain, or maybe it's even rough, meaning you, there's so many branches, the brush, but I can see... But it's hard for me to get through. With a 22 long rifle, I would have to get closer to the squirrel on average. And if it's dry or if it's steep, you can't slip very well on steep ground. And then what about your shooting stance? So I get to pick my shooting stance more with this caliber, 17 HM2. I'd rather shoot off of a more level place at 80 yards on a squirrel than to shoot from 45 on something that's steep as hell. So I get more choices with this gun. Now what about hunting around fields? You know, oh, squirrel is a funny critter. They'll be in the woods and you can watch them. You can watch squirrels. Sharpshooter's not bullshitting anybody. I can take you, I could have took you to a place this morning if it wasn't foggy. And you can watch these squirrels. They will come out of the woods and go all the way to the field just to make a, just to make a pass. I don't know why they do it. So what about hunting around fields? Yeah, there's a lot of fields around here. You can hunt in that field and you can walk away, farther away from the edge. You might walk. 80 yards from the edge. Well, you know what that means, right? That means all your shots would be, what, 80 plus yards. I've even walked 100 yards from the edge with this gun. Leaves off. You can't walk around the edge of a field. A squirrel will see you. So you get to play off again. Another situation where this caliber would have advantage. And yes, you would be lasering some of them shots, but guess what? If I laser a squirrel with this gun, all I got to do is hit a tree or something in there close to him. Three yards and a hundred yards with a 22 long rifle means what? Even if I've got a gun that shoots well and I know the drop, I got to have that damn thing lasered to a damn T practically at a hundred yards. I can be five yards off with this gun right here and probably kill a squirrel. Now, it ain't always about going out and getting your limit on squirrels, okay? It's not always about that. And it hasn't been for me, actually, even in the last six, eight years. Some areas are not going to probably yield a limit, yet the squirrels are there, but they're hard to get out with a 22 long rifle, especially leaves off. Okay? And it may be the kind of hunter you are. I'll be 63 next April. 
So I can take this gun right here. Maybe you're getting old and you can't walk as far. Just think of the square footage. We can even dial this even down to acreage. Let's assume that I can see pretty good around me for 90 yards in all directions. Think about that. So that's what? So that would be in front of me 90 yards, to the left of me 90 yards, and to the right of me 90 yards. Well, that's 200 and what? 90 and 90 is what? 180 times 3. Five hundred and forty feet. So I can literally take this gun and I can sit in one spot and hunt a half acre of ground cane or more, a little more than that, and never move really. And that's what I do sometimes. You see what I'm saying? Now, I've hunted with leaves off even with the HM2. Even this happened to me year before last even. I remember it cl clearly. Leaves off. You can't sit too close to den trees. You, what do you think a squirrel does when it comes out of a den tree? It's just like a damn groundhog. It'll look around for danger. They'll see you. So you get to play off of den trees further with this gun intentionally. Now, squirrels shot with a with this gun. Well, okay, well, what about if you're shooting at squirrels at 75 yards away? Well, if you keep hitting them, they probably ain't going to move around too much. If you get in, inside those squirrels at 40 yards and start shooting them with anything with leaves off, what are they going to start doing? You're closer to them. So actually, distance can be an advantage with this gun. Being away from the squirrel, it ain't like it ain't like it was when I hunted in the 1980s, 1990s. You know what I'm saying? Leaves off with a 22 rifle meant what? Oh, you had to get close. Well, the closer you are to the squirrel, that means the noise is what? The noise is louder. Your movement is easier for them to see. I done did a video showing what I, where I thought a 22 long rifle would have some advantage. Leaves off unless the pop. Maybe you're hunting close to somebody's house or something. Okay, that would be an advantage maybe for a 22 long rifle. Now, ricochets. Let's talk a little bit about them because I've seen some people make comments. This 17 HM2, if you're using this gun... It is true. It is probably less prone to ricochet, especially at closer distances, meaning the bullet impacts from a closer range on something. It will deform the bullet, tear it apart. But longer distances, you better be careful. You could still get ricochets with that 17 HM2, and you will with 22 long rifle as well. Leaves off, and I've talked to a couple of other guys, and I don't even know who they are. I just happen to run into them in this hunting, this store that sells a lot of guns up the road here in Kentucky. And I talked to them a few times. Leaves off, you know what they like? They like the HM2. They don't like the 22 long rifle. So you can like a 22 long rifle. You can like a 17 HM2. All I do is, I'm telling you, oh, I have put video up for you all to see. You all get to see the squirrels. If you shoot a squirrel with this gun, and you don't hit him in the head, you get, I'm showing you the squirrels. I lay them out where you can look closely at them. And that's why I did this. I'm not a person that's running my mouth on a forum just to be running it. I show you the evidence based on my use of the caliber and do the best I could with equipment I had to call out the ranges. And this is why, to show you the potential, the capabilities. 
And I also talk about squirrel behavior and why I do some of the things I do. So I'm not on a forum telling you I've killed zillions of squirrels with one or two photos. There's multiple, multiple videos over there on Rimfire Central. And you're going to see some more, and some of these shots will have a trigger cam. Now, the trigger cam is not going to tell you the distance. But when I talk about scope magnification and laser after the fact or before the fact, if it's real long, I'm going to laser before the fact. If it's 80 yards or 75 yards, I'm probably going to shoot the squirrel and I'll laser it after the fact just to share data. This is not to show, oh, those sharpshooters are real crack shot. Like I said, you don't have to be as good a shot with this gun to harvest the same squirrel at 60 yards as you do with a real good shoot 22 long rifle. Because of the bullet, because of the trajectory, and because the bullet in this gun is only in the barrel half the time. Okay. We see this, you see this with center fire rifles? You don't have to be no crack shot with a center fire rifle to shoot a deer at a hundred yards. You can snatch a piss out of that trigger on that gun and still kill that deer. But when you start getting into slower projectiles like crossbows, you start jerking on a trigger on one of them, watch what happens to you. Or a 22 long rifle, subsonic or a high velocity. So it's just, you know, it depends on what your, you know, what are your goals? Do you want to walk around a lot? Do you want to go and just set up in a spot and you've got, you know, when I look at this when I'm out hunting, new terrain, if it's a new place I've got access to hunt, if I hunt it leaves on, I will be watching to see where I can come back and set up with that 17 HM2 caliber with leaves off. Preview the site. And I did that last year on a couple pieces of property. And oh, yeah, if Lord willing, I'll be back there this year leaves off. Okay. Now, you can take this gun, too. You know, you set up and you play off of an area where you suspect to see squirrels. Well, I've done that, and I've had squirrels coming on me close. You know, I've had it happen. So you may shoot a squirrel at 35 yards, and in the next shot, you may shoot one at 85 yards or 90 yards. But now you need a scope. If you're going to start shooting squirrel heads out there at 80 and 90 and 100, 125 yards with this gun, you need a scope that will help you do this. Not no large subtension reticle scope, no low mag scope. I recommend first focal plane personally, but with the right reticle and a good tracking scope for elevation, I could use a second focal plane scope. But I don't like for the wind, holding off for the wind. And I talk about this in my videos, even on some of the, how I held some of the squirrels. I even show cigarette smoke moving to show you why I did what I did. Good rule of thumb with this gun right here. If you're shooting at a squirrel in the squirrel woods at 70 to 85 yards. You see that cigarette burning right there? You see that in that camera? You see how that, you see how that cigarette smoke is moving right there? If that cigarette smoke is moving like that and you're shooting at a squirrel at 80 yards, you hold on whichever side edge of the head and you'll be just fine. And that's what I do. And I've said as much, you know, in the video, held left edge of head. So sometimes I use the squirrel's dimensions for hold off, meaning left edge of head, right edge of head. But if it's longer than that, I use that reticle on these first focal plane scopes and dial my elevation turret if I need to. 
I don't like using a first focal plane reticle to judge wind hold off as well as elevation on longer shots because you know you you're guessing off of the two axes is in the scope vertical and horizontal reticle you're you're it's more of a guess and i don't like that just i see some people are good at it i've watched their videos so yeah it depends on what you want to do okay what your goals are how far you want to shoot the squirrels. You can get a limit of squirrels with a 22 long rifle. But it would be it would be dependent on the maybe the terrain, the hunting conditions, your physical health. Can you walk? How can you what kind of ground can you walk on? You know? That's gonna conclude the video. Everybody have a nice day. That's a nice setup there. That short primer stick is the one. Don't get the old long one. You see it in there? That's bullshit to use with leaves off. You're not going to have a lot of steeper angle shots with leaves off. And that's the other thing I'll bring up right quick before I turn this camera off. If you don't get too close to the squirrel, now some will go up in trees in holes, okay? But if you're away from them, what does that do? Decreases the angle. So that short stick does a damn good job. And notice the footprint here at the bottom. You can get it close to your body. The big stick, tall stick, when it's spread out, it has a bigger wingspan at the bottom, and you're having to push it farther away from your body. Okay? Which means where it positions itself on the forearm, your steeper angle shots, it can be bullshit, not to mention the fact when you're in the woods, these legs have to sit somewhere. Well, the smaller the area, the better where the legs will be unobstructed to set and keep the stick stable. You know, you learn all this stuff when you go out there and you use this stuff, and that's what I've done, okay? I try to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, too. That's going to conclude the video.